All right, let's jump into some games with this sweet looking Mind Link deck. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited. I, I've, I've discovered this deck sometime last week and I've been really wanting to play it, but it was the end of the month and I didn't want to start testing brand new decks right before the month reset it. This hand doesn't look good enough. I'm assuming turn two, three play like these aren't very great. And this is not playable into turn eight. Um, Although we have six power, but let's hope we get a mind link in our next hand. <laughs> we don't, uh, but this hand is a little bit better in a sense that we have a wisdom of the elders, which will allow us to draw a card. So let's start with. Actually, don't know. Um, let's start with primal, because we have a double primal card in our hand. Oh, we have a premium wisdom of the elders, which looks pretty sweet. I do really enjoy the premium cards in this deck. Um, they are not just, they didn't just randomly make the card shiny and, and, and call, it a, a, a call it a day. They actually, I actually think they, they put a lot of effort into, wait a minute, did I screw up here? I think I did. I need to make another primal. Okay. Um, yeah, they, a lot of the, a lot of the um, premium cards you can tell they put a lot of thought into it. Yeah, see this looks this uh this banner looks great. The the shiny icon in the middle of the banner with the streaks of light. Okay, perfect. Now we have a mine link. Uh I guess we'll play the mine link first. Um <laughs> This is the first time I've ever played this card. Um our opponent is playing some kind of Stone Scar deck, and the fact that he hasn't played any spells in the first two turns means that this is a slower mid range version. And. Uh, you know what? Let's Reign of Frogs him and see what happens. Oh, two torches and two Cinder Yetis. Am I. Am I more afraid of the torches or am I afraid of the. C I think I'm more afraid of the Cinder Yetis because. Um, the torch does. 3 damage to me once, whereas the Cinder Yetis can do 3 damage to me every turn. So I think it's better to get rid of these. But I guess he can still do damage to me because... Oh, hey! Oh! I don't draw the card? Mindlink just plays it? Oh no, it says create and draw a copy. It's only because they have destiny. So it only works with Reign of Frogs, I suppose, and it won't work with Unstable Form, I assume? Huh. Okay. Oh, he also gets two copies of one once. Um, okay, so that happened. Um, the question is what I do now. I want to kill this 4-3, uh, but I guess I can't kill it anyway. I can crystallize and kill his 1-1s, one which I think is a probably good play because he could torch them. But no, he's not going to torch the one Who am I kidding? He's not going to torch the 1-1s. One um, so let's just go ahead and play the Amber Acolyte here. Uh, because we're still at 21 life, we're pretty healthy life total. Um, I could potentially double block his Champion of Chaos, and this will force him to use one of his um, torches. Nah, let's just do this. Those are easy trades. I'll take the three. I'll take the four, go to 17 here. Oh, he's thinking about Rapid Strike? Mm. Okay, so he's got, so he has four cards. Two of those uh, are torches, and two of the, one of those is a Rapid Strike, and I don't know what the fourth card is. And now he has a 5-5 five, five Flyer. All right, so now I suppose we'll see what unstable form does. <laughs> oh, perfect. Okay, so this is really defensive and that's great. All right, so that worked out really well. Again, that's like, that's, that's like, that's like the perfect card. It, it's perfect. It gains me five life. It blocks both his units and it turns his ultra aggressive 5-5 five five into a pretty useless 1-5. I'm more than happy taking one damage. Wow, okay. That was a really lucky unstable form. So, but we also know that the unstable form 
push the unit into our hands, so we don't you don't get it for free. Um, maybe we just unstable form our own Lumen Defender and see what a six kind of no 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 that's no 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 no. Let's just draw two cards first. Give ourselves the most options. I think I'm just gonna play the Amber Acolyte so that I can Shimmer Pack next turn. Oh, never mind. We can Scouting Party next turn. This is gonna be great. Let's upgrade our uh, Amber Acolyte and see what it turns into. Just because I have so many copies of Unstable Form, why not? He's going to torch it. <laughs> that's fine. That's great. That's that's like a half a card for one card trade. And the reason I say that is because the Amber Acolyte has um, already drawn me a, a power. So it's basically replaced itself. Um... And then the unstable form, I have, it's Echo, so I'm, I'm using half of a card, and my opponent's using a full card, and it's a very good card. I forced him to use a very good card on a really bad unit. Um, so that's great. Yep, that's fine. I'm taking a lot of damage this turn. I know that for sure. Because we do know that he has a Rapishon in his hand, and there's nothing we can do about that. But now, I think... He's going to be in a lot of trouble. I'm going to go ahead and unstable form his 5-3 because this thing does way too much damage. I think the average 4 drop is not going to do nearly as much damage. And if it turns into a great 4-4, we can use another unstable form and see what happens to it. Yeah, this is a piece of crap. That's fine. <laughs> Although, the fact that it has uh, Overwhelm scares me a little bit. Um, oh no, he's a burn spell that I'm dead. So let's, let's change it again and hope that it doesn't have Overwhelm this time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Alright, well. If he doesn't have a big burn spell, then we live. But if he has an Obliterate, then we lose this game. <laughs> no. I was having so much fun. Um, so we made a really big mistake this game. Uh, what we should have done is because we knew he had the Rapid Shot in his hand. And I knew that Rapid Shot plus Champion of Chaos is a lot of damage. We should have used the Unstable Form on his Champion of Chaos a turn earlier, in which case we wouldn't have taken that ten, 9 damage, and I think we would have lived that game. So we lost that entirely because we played badly, and um, and part of the reason for that is... Oh hey, this is uh, this guy's on my friends list. Um, and a part of the reason we play badly is because the deck is pretty new to us, so we're kind of um, distracted by all the gimmicky and neat interactions in it. Uh, I think this is fine. We have basically three power here. Um, so if we draw one power over the next two turns, we can play almost every card in our hand. In fact, we can play every card in our hand, so, so that would be fine. Um, this guy is a competitive player. He finishes Master every month, so he's going to be using a real deck. So this is... Oh, nice. So now we have four power. Um, and we're guaranteed to play every card in our hand. We're doing good. Let's see if this is Zenin or Praxis. Or Combray, I guess. Combray seems to be the best deck at the moment. Or the most popular deck at the moment, anyway. Yeah. Snap block. No reason not, no reason not to. It was a free attack on his part, and it was a free block on my part, so... Oh. Hmm. Hmm. We're going to play the Mind Link first. Because if... Oh, never mind. We can't play the Mind Link, so... That decision was taken out of our hands. Uh, so next turn, we play Mind Link, and then on the following turn, we can Reign of Frogs him. My opponent is actually at 4 power, he's going to be at 5 power on turn 3 because of these two Disciples uh, in Initiates, and that's pretty scary because he could potentially play a Cerso, and that is really difficult to deal with. And that we have no way to beat a Cerso. Oh, wow! Looks like my, my, looks like my opponent is also brewing up with a Storm here. Um... <laughs> Let's play Mind Link. I mean... After all, this is what this deck is made for, made to do. So he gets a 5-5 five, five when he uh, mentors this thing. Hmm. I don't have any removal spells in my hand. Um, a lot of very large units would be problematic. We have a 1-1 one, one Scorpion. 
we have a 1-1 one, one Scorpion that would be able to block his 5-5 five, five or the 3-6. So we're doing okay. But my opponent has a lot of power and he's deep in the tank. Presumably he has a lot of options here. Um, for us though, it's pretty straightforward. We play Primal Sigil next turn and I think if he's... If he's not going to put a big threat onto the board, then I'm just going to Reign of Frogs him. But if he plays a really powerful unit, then I will most likely play the Disciple and make a 1-1 Scorpion to block with. So he's my, my opponent looks like he's mana flooded. So let's just go ahead and Reign of Frogs him. But the fact that he didn't play anything tells me that his hand may not be very good. Ah, whatever. Let's just do it. Oh, wow. Um... Do I really care about the Kranosaur? I don't care about the Permafrost at all. I don't care about the Kranosaur at all. Um, if anything, I'm more worried about his Crystallize. Um, it just means I have to always hold up mana for it. Now let's just get rid of the 6-6. Six, six. And if he Crystallizes me here, I lose 2 units. Um, he hits me for 1, 2, uh, 7. It's kind of bad, but... On the following turn, I can favor, followed by a disciple, and that should be able to clock up the board. Yeah, that's fine. Yep, that's fine. All right, now we have to play catch up. Hmm. The fact that we draw a primal sigil it changes my mind a little bit because we can now potentially hold up backlash in case he draws another crystallize um but we know he has a, a permafrost in one and is one of his cards and we don't know what the other card is um well let's just play the sigil first and then think about this i think putting this in play Oh no, he has a permafrost, so if I play the Disciple, he can easily permafrost the Scorpion. But if I play the Titan, he can't attack me. So let's just go ahead and play the Titan first. Okay. So now he won't be able to attack me unless he finds a way to remove the Titan. Or he's willing to throw away a unit. My life is pretty high at 15. This is not yet the time for him to go Alpha Strike, so I don't think he'll attack me. And now we're in really good shape. Um, let's put the Disciple in play first. And I think here we're definitely going to make a deadly unit. Um, I am on the defensive. I'm not... Oh, actually, the Scorpion dies to a Crystallize. Oh, but that's fine. We'll play the Obelisk on the following turn, and then it'll no longer be killed by a Crystallize. And I think having a... A deadly scorpion right now is better for us because we are definitely the deck that's on the defensive. Okay, so that could have been two Kranosaurs. And I think we'd make the right choice, um, Reign of Frog, his Kranosaur, because a 6-6 six, six Kranosaur would have beaten our Sandstorm Titan and that would have been very problematic. Um, oh wow, it's a Dinosaur deck. Okay. Um, I don't need to play the Mind Link for sure because... I have nothing to mind link, uh, but put the uh, obelisk in play, and all of a sudden, this is a 7 8. If he wants to kill it, he needs to block with 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and he loses 1, 2. He loses 3 units to trade for my Titan. Mm, you no, know I think that's okay. I think that's worth a trade. I am a little bit scared of him having a very large board because at any given time he draws an obelisk, then all of a sudden these units are are going to be three threes, and then I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. So I think it's okay to trade units, um, especially killing this patriarch seems like a good deal. This patriarch must do something in his deck. So I'm definitely not going to kill this three six here, um, or do I? How much do I care about killing? You know what? I can kill the 3-6 and the 1-1. Oh, you know what? That's good enough. I'll kill the 3-6 and the 2-1. Um, letting him keep his frog and his 2-4. And that's it. We'll keep up mana for the backlash. Oh, wait. Mistake. The Sandstorm Titan is dead. This thing is flying. 
then he can ultimate to give itself plus two plus two. That's a four six, which makes it a pretty quick clock. Is this that? Oh, this is a dinosaur. I made a big mistake. I forgot about the fact that these things fly or this thing flies. That's a big mistake. But giving him potential five fives is also kind of problematic. Hmm, don't know. If I had killed this instead, I could have also killed one of his frogs. So I could have gotten this and this off the table, and he keeps a 3-6, which I can block with a deadly. Mm, maybe I made a mistake. Now I'm dead in two, three turns. Two more turns after this, I'm dead. Oh dear, I have to draw something good here. Ooh, this is spicy. Let's take a look. Oh no, I should have played to mine like, no, I don't need it. <laughs> What are the odds? <laughs> Presumably he wants this to be a... I don't have a way to... Hmm. Well, let's just... Yeah, let's change this 3-4 into something else. I just need it to not fly. Uh, that's good. We'll play that. Um, we'll smash him with the 4-4. Four, four. I think it's unlikely that this unit will get flying from either of us, because we have a lot of reactive cards. Um, and he's probably not going to randomly play his permafrost on my crappy units just to give it flying, right? I don't know, maybe, maybe he would. Nope, this is why we have Backlash. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this game is pretty interesting, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> this gets, I think both our decks are not very good. <laughs> I think my opponent's deck is pretty gimmicky too. Oh no, another Mage Patriarch. Um, yeah. I think on my turn, I'm just gonna... Whoa! I can play all of these? No, I can't. I can't. I'm one power short from playing all of these. So let's just play the second obelisk. Now I can really smash him. The 6-6 six, six and a 5-5. Five, five. Actually, all my units are gigantic. Um, the question is, can I survive the backswing? Um, no, this not attack with the 4-6s seems kind of pointless. He can block with his 3-6. So let's just attack with these two, which forces some chum blocks here. I think I do need to play out my hand very quickly so I can block this potential 4-6 with my 8-6. <laughs> this game's pretty interesting. Uh... <laughs> my opponent hasn't played a single mentor though, so I wonder what he's uses to uh, mentor these things. Is it maybe like Dragon Breath or something? Oh, it's a 710 because of my uh, obelisks. Okay, so he drew an echo card. In this deck, it's probably the Sourport 5 4 dinosaur, I'm guessing, because he's playing dinosaurs. So he has, he can play one 5 4 dinosaur, one more in his hand, one permafrost, and so basically, one unknown card in his hand is what I'm guessing. Yeah, two 5 4 dinosaurs, one permafrost, one unknown. His probably best play is to make this into a 4-6 and attack us for 4 in the air and hope that I don't draw a flyer. But as soon as I play my last card, this becomes a flyer and he dies, actually, because this, be this thing becomes a 9-6 flying. Oh no, these are dinosaurs too. That makes sense. Now he has a lot of blockers for my, uh, my library phoenix. And the unknown card is a initiate descends, and so finally he's going to permafrost my flyer, I'm guessing. Yep, on the flyer. Oh, whoa, on the 7-6 here. Oh, because now he... Oh, no. He can hit me for quite a bit. Ooh, this, ooh, this is getting dangerous. Because next turn, um, he kills me no matter what. Um, Unless I draw a blocker. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. 
No! Oh, the perfect draw. All right. Um, let's just smash him. Um, wait, 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 wait. Can I survive if I attack? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten attackers. One, two, three, four, five, six blockers. So four will come through. Um, so I can't afford to attack him with anything. Well, I think I can. Let's attack him with a 9-6. And this forces a chump block, so it's, a, it's the same thing as leaving it behind for blocking. Yeah, this, I mean, he's dead if he doesn't block, so he has to throw one of the 1-1s one in the way. So it's the exact same thing as blocking with it. I lose to basically any pump from his deck. If he draws an obelisk, then I lose immediately. Mm, I don't know why he's thinking so much about it. Um, all he has to do is block with a 1-1 one, one and chump it. I would definitely chump with a frog though. Yep, that's the super easy play. I don't think there's anything else to think about. If this is an obelisk, I lose. If this is a removal spell, I believe I don't lose because he has nine attackers and I have five blockers. So four will come through. Um, it'll be the, it'll be the four one ones. Oh, if it's a removal spell, then he wins because if, <laughs> why do I always call it? I always call these things. No, he doesn't need to pump it. I'm dead if he attacks with everything. Yeah. And he does attack with everything. All right. That's game. It is one of the few cards in this deck that would beat me. Oh, I'm so close to winning this game too. Well, that was fun. Um, I think we made the right choices most of the time. I'm not sure. Like, I don't know what the perfect timing is for playing in stable form. I'm not sure if you should play it on, my, on your own unit sometimes. Because uh, I think that would be... I think there are certainly times where... It might be better to play on your, on your own unit and hope to get something very powerful rather than playing on his and hope to get something good because then he'll, then he'll have something good. Um, maybe um, earlier in the game, I could have played the second Mind Link and then played in Stable Forms, which, which gives me two copies every time I play it um, because I, I chose not to play the Mind Link because it would slow me down by one full turn. Um, maybe that was a mistake. Maybe if I had... Uh, play the second mind link and draw an extra copy with each unstable form, then I would have enough blockers. That's possible too. Um, I haven't drawn any of the storm links, so I have no idea if it's any good. Um, Wisdom of the Elders didn't seem particularly useful. Uh, Reign of Frogs, I'm not quite sold on it, but the fact that the frogs go into play does make the card a lot better. Um, but it only works with Mind Link in play, though. So with Mind Link in play, Reign of Frogs is very often, you know, get rid of one of his cards and put a 1-1 Frog into play. So that's probably okay. Um, but let's play some more games. Um, we are over 2 with this deck, unfortunately. But I do think the deck is interesting. And I do feel that there have been decision points throughout the game where I wasn't quite sure what the right play was. And I think only more experience with the deck will teach me that. So let's record uh, the next games in a separate video. Thanks for watching.